Right now, it's a homecoming on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. <laughs> After years of traveling abroad, the man who started Havana Rumba and Mojito is back in town. I was driving my wife crazy, let's go back to Kentucky, let's go back to Kentucky. So you know, we're happy to be back. And this time, instead of Cuban fare, Fernando Martinez is serving Mexican food with a new age twist. We're trying to get away from the hard tacos and the ground beef tacos. Sink your teeth into flautas, made with duck confit and spicy crab meat aioli, or fish tacos made with vodka and Mexican beer. And then we're gonna add, you know, our uh, dos equis. All of that, plus something from south of the border for your sweet tooth. Come with us as we reveal the secrets to making all of this yourself. We're behind the scenes at Guacamole, right now on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. The secret is... Secrets. Secrets. I'll give you one more secret. Secrets. That's the secret, yeah. Hey everybody, Kevin Harned with you again, and this time you're in for a special treat here at Guacamole. It's gonna make you forget everything you know about Mexican food. We're going out to eat and behind the scenes at Guacamole, which is off Hurstbourne Parkway near Dorsey Lane. It's authentic Mexican cuisine with the modern twist. We're trying to get away from the hard tacos and the ground beef tacos. Instead, you'll get things like ceviche and fish tacos with a spicy crab meat sauce. We're using, you know, beautiful china. You know, we're using modern techniques like sous vide. Fernando Martinez is the man behind guacamole. And this is not his first venture in the Louisville restaurant scene. He's the one who brought us Havana Rumba and Mojito's Tapas Restaurant. Both serve food inspired by Fernando's roots in Cuba. I was born in Cuba until I was uh, 19 years old. And you know, I always had the dream of, you know, having my own restaurant, but you know, in Cuba it's illegal until, you know, last year it was illegal to own your own business. You know, 19 years you know, ago, uh, I couldn't own my own business, so I decided to, you know, come to the States and, you know, go for my dream, and that's what I did. Since then, Fernando has traveled the world, picking up more culinary secrets along the way. And now, lucky for us, he's back in the place he calls home. I like to call Louisville, and you know, I, 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 this city, it's, it's part of me, you know. The best things that happen in life to me, they happen here. You know, my kids were born here, I opened my first restaurant here, I met my wife here, so you know, I feel as Louisville, Louisvillean as I do Cuban, so you know, I, I love it here. And Louisville loves having him here, especially now that he's added authentic Mexican food to his repertoire. And if you like guacamole, you've got to see what they're doing with it here. You can actually sample three different styles. I love making guacamole. I used to do uh, guacamole in uh, places that I used to have before. And here I wanted to get a little bit creative. Uh, so we do uh, pork rinds that we serve with one of uh, our uh, guacamoles. Uh, in Spanish we call it chicharrón. We finish it with uh, pepitas, you know, toasted uh, butternut squash uh, seeds, a little bit of goat cheese. And then for, uh, you know, instead of using regular chips, or plantain chips, you use the, uh, the chicharrones to uh, scoop the uh, guacamole. You use it as a, as a chip. And then there's this, what Chef Fernando calls a Yucatan-style guacamole. We use uh, pico red onions that I use a lot of in, uh, you know, in Yucatan. Uh, we do uh, roasted uh, corn and roasted poblano peppers. For that one, we use uh, plantain chips, like the one we have uh, right here. And you know, that's what you use uh, instead of regular uh, chips and then we have the tradicional that means just uh, traditional guacamole that is just your regular you know guacamole with you know the pico de gallo and the regular chips. As you can tell this is not your typical Mexican restaurant and Fernando is not your typical chef. In addition to all of his experience chef Fernando actually left the states for a while to complete an intense cooking course at Le Cordon Bleu 
a very high-profile cooking school in France. I wanted to learn the basics of, of French cooking. Now I'm using it for, uh, you know, all types of cuisines. You know, like here we're doing duck confit. That's, you know, it doesn't get more French uh, than, you know, confit. But, you know, we use it in Mexican cuisine, so we're doing duck confit uh, flautas. And since this is Secrets of Louisville Chefs, Fernando is revealing the secrets to his recipe, so you can do it at home. You know, it's a really simple uh, recipe. We make our uh, fresh uh, homemade tortillas here, but for this we have to use what they call a pressed tortilla. And what happens if you use a regular tortilla, when you put it in the deep fryer, it's gonna pop, out, uh, pop off uh, a little bit. And this is really easy to make. What we have right here is our uh, in-house made uh, duck confit. Uh, we cook uh, duck legs and uh, then we uh, marinate. Uh, and we cook them in duck fat for like two and a half hours to three hours. Then we shred it and mix it with uh, caramelized onions and uh, a little bit of thyme, uh, salt and pepper. What we do here is we add a little bit of our uh, duck confit. Then you roll your flautas and then we use these uh, two figs and you have your, uh, you know, your duck flautas. They keep them in, in that shape, you know, like looking like flautas. If you, uh, if you don't do that, you know, when you throw them in in the fryer, they're gonna open and, you know, every, all the confit, duck confit's gonna come out of the, uh, of the tortillas. We're gonna go into a fryer and we're gonna go ahead and fry the, uh, the duck flautas. Another thing that sets these flautas apart from the rest is the tomato jalapeno marmalade that goes with them. Tomatoes, we're not gonna do anything. We're just gonna add them in the pot. This one is called Fresno jalapeno. It's just a ripe uh, red jalapeno. We're gonna add our uh, chopped uh, red jalapenos. To this, we're gonna add half a quart of sugar. You need, you know, we're making a marmalade, so you need a lot of uh, sugar. And we're gonna add one quart of uh, water. And we're just gonna cook it for, you know, an hour, hour and a half. We're also gonna add, uh, you know, a quarter of a uh, quart of uh, red, red vinegar. And, you know, we're just gonna cook it until, you know, it gets a, uh, you know, marmalade consistency. And this is the uh, final product right here. So it has, you know, a really thick marmalade uh, consistency and you can still see some of the, uh, whole cherry tomatoes in there. And with that, it's just about time to eat. And our flautas are, you know, nice and uh, crispy. So we're gonna start plating the dish with our, uh, you know, fresco jalapeno and cherry tomato uh, marmalade. We're gonna plate our uh, flautas. And it doesn't stop there. The chef will top all of this with more fresh flavors. We're gonna season our uh, Napa cabbage. What we have right here is uh, a lemon uh, flavor uh, oil that we're flavoring our uh, Napa cabbage with. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Just gonna put a little bit over on top. Then we're gonna add some of our uh, crema mexicana, it's a uh, Mexican sour cream to make it look you know, nice. And, and then we're gonna finish it up with uh, a little bit of queso fresco. And what we have right here is we have in-house pickled uh, red onions. Then we're gonna top the uh, duck flautas with that. And there you go, you have uh, duck confit flautas with uh, fresco jalapeno and uh, cherry tomato, tomato marmalade, napa cabbage, queso fresco, crema mexicana, and pickled red onions. Now that's a mouthful and a tasty one at that. Thanks for the flautas, Fernando, and thanks for sharing the secrets. Mm. We have more secrets to share coming up. Next, fish tacos, like you've never seen before, with a spicy crab meat sauce. Yeah, it's really simple. Once you have the butter ready, and later, a modern Mexican dessert. Yes, we're gonna do a Mexican uh, capirotada. It's, it's like a bread pudding. We're behind the scenes at guacamole, and there's a lot more to see coming up on Secrets of Louisville Chefs.
everybody, Kevin Harnett back with you with more Secrets of Louisville Chefs. And this time we're at the Mexican restaurant Guacamole. You'll notice that's two words. You know, when you mention guacamole, people already know that it's a Mexican restaurant. But you know, we split the word in two because of the guac. You know, that's how sometimes people call guacamole. And the mole that is an authentic uh, Mexican sauce that is used to, uh, you know, finish uh, a lot of uh, Mexican dishes. Making mole is an art form, and here they do three different kinds. But you know, some moles, people use, you know, 40, 50 different ingredients. We have one uh, mole poblano, one pepian verde, it's like a green mole, and then we do a red mole that is called uh, Chile Colorado mole. In the poblano, you even use uh, chocolate to, uh, to flavor it. Fernando's moles are a bit complicated to make at home, but most of his dishes are just the opposite. You know, cooking doesn't need to be uh, extremely complicated. Well, the best food that I had, it's, it was, you know, really simple, straightforward uh, food. One such dish is guacamole's fish tacos. They're easy to do yourself when you learn the secrets. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do our tempura butter for our uh, fish tacos. Uh, to this, I'm going to add a mix of uh, rice flour and uh, regular flour, one egg. And then here comes Fernando's secret ingredient, which makes all the difference in the crispiness of the fish. We're going to add uh, about an ounce and a half of vodka. What happens when you are making a butter, the less water content you have in your, in your uh, butter, the crispier it gets. Vodka has, you know, almost no water in it. So this way we're gonna add vodka to it. And then we're gonna add, you know, our uh, dos equis. And what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna add it little by little. It's a Mexican uh, beer. And you can use pretty much any beer you want to, but you know, we're a Mexican restaurant, so we wanna use a Mexican uh, beer. This is the consistency that you want. And you know, I like to leave a little bit of lumps in it, because you know, that, that when you put it in the fryer, they, those uh, little lumps, they get, uh, they get crispy. So right here we have our uh, cod. Cod is the perfect fish to fry because it will stand up to high heat without drying out or falling apart. You want to use, you know, cod or you can use mahi-mahi. You know, you can use that type of white uh, fish for your tacos. You can use red snapper. And we're going to go ahead and fry our fish. It's really simple. Once you have the butter ready, the fish is going to be fantastic. But wait until you see what goes with it. Again, we're trying to do something different and a little bit more uh, modern. It's a crab meat aioli made with a trio of Asian chili sauces. We're using a little bit of uh, mayonnaise here. We're going to add some of our uh, you know, crab meat. Here we have uh, a little bit of kimchi base. So we're going to add a uh, tablespoon of that. We have uh, chiracha. And then here uh, we have sambal olek, another uh, spicy uh, Asian sauce. What we have right here is diced uh, green onions. And we're going to add them for, uh, you know, flavor and, uh, you know, also texture. A quick mix of all of that, and the spicy aioli is ready to go. You can, you can even use it as a dip. I mean, when you try it, you, you, you love it. It's almost like a spicy crab meat dip. Okay, so our uh, fish is ready. As you can see, it's nice and, uh, and crispy. Here we have our uh, homemade tortillas that I'm uh, warming up a little bit in this, uh, in this saute pan. We have our crab meat aioli that we set it in the bottom of the, uh, of the tortillas. Our nice uh, crispy uh, fish. Next comes the color, with pickled red cabbage that's made in-house. You know, vinegar and sugar, really simple to make. We do a little on top of it like this. We're gonna top it with a little bit of chopped uh, green onions, just a little bit for color and, uh, and flavor. Nice uh, wedges of lime, and uh, there you go. We serve them with a little bit of uh, black beans and rice refry black beans and rice, and he makes it a great uh, meal. A great meal indeed. 
In fact, uh, not only for the tasty flavors, but it's easy on the wallet too. Thanks again, Fernando, for sharing the secrets. Next up, it's time for dessert, Mexican style. It's like a bread pudding. This is also an easy recipe you can make at home. Stick around for the secrets you'll need. We're coming right back to Guacamole on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Kevin Harned with you again with more Secrets of Louisville Chefs. This time we're getting a taste of modern Mexican food at Guacamole on Firstborn. Mexican using the authentic ingredients, put in a modern twist to them. It's nothing like the Mexican food you're used to. It's completely unique and over the top tasty. And the design of the restaurant mirrors the style of the food. It's full of colorful and authentic art. We brought it from Mexico because, you know, we want to get away from, you know, the regular sarape and the sombreros. And, you know, we wanted a place to look authentic, but still, you know, uh, look modern. So, you know, we went to Mexico and we brought a lot of what they call Talavera art. Uh, we brought uh, alejibres from Oaxaca, uh, lamps from Mexico. Some of the chairs that we have, we brought them from uh, Mexico. Guacamole is the latest venture of Chef Fernando Martinez, who came here from Cuba and started Havana Rumba and Mojitos here in town. It was a long time dream come true. I was lucky enough to bring, you know, pretty much all of my family here to the States. And, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, part of uh, Mojitos or Havana Rumba, but they still own it and the restaurants are doing well. Chef Fernando sold his interest in those restaurants to pursue more cooking knowledge elsewhere, including France, but it didn't take long for the bluegrass to call him back home. Well, I miss Louisville so much, you know, during these two and a half years, and I told my wife, you know what, let's go to where we belong. You know, Louisville is a great food city, and people here are the nicest people that we encounter, you know, in anywhere that we went, so, you know, our kids love to hear, so I said, why not? Let's go back and, you know, do Mexican food, and now we're here and we love it. Guacamole is still a family business. Fernando's right-hand man in the kitchen is Janiel Martinez. It's uh, my cousin that, you know, we've been working together since, you know, Mojito and, and Havana Rumba. Just like Fernando, Janiel isn't bashful when it comes to sharing secrets. And right now, he's doing dessert, Mexican style. Yes, we're gonna do a Mexican uh, capirotada. It's, it's like a bread pudding. It's uh, condensed milk, evaporated milk, and regular uh, milk, uh, cinnamon, sugar, and eggs. Okay, then we have here some uh, bread cut in, in chunks. Yeah, we use like normal um, uh, Texas toast, thick test of Texas toast. And then you soak all that bread with that mix that you made before, and you add some raisins on it. You mix all that together, so the bread get really like soaked in that um, mix that we made before. You add it to our uh, mold. We add it to a bain marie, mm -hmm. like a water bath. And we cook it in the oven uh, at 350 for about 40, 30 to 40 minutes. So after uh, 35 to 40 minutes, we have the, the bread pudding uh, done. And now it gets even better with the addition of some salted caramel sauce. It's made with uh, the cajeta, salt, and a little bit of head cream. Put it on the side. We use our homemade uh, banana ice cream. This one is um, a flavored banana ice cream with uh, banana uh, chunks in it. Uh, we salt them, we, we cook them in, in sugar and make like a syrup uh, with uh, chunks of bananas and mix it in the banana flavored ice cream. We top our uh, bread pudding with that banana. There we, we finish this with, uh, with um, uh, pistachio brittle. The final touch, our customer, when they eat it, the idea is to put the salted caramel cajeta 
on top of the bread pudding. A sweet ending to another sweet show. We appreciate the Martinez family for sharing their secrets so you can make the food here at guacamole right in your own kitchen at home. If you're looking for the recipes, they're easy to find. Look them up online at newlocaltv.com. There you'll also find a complete restaurant guide and some videos of prior shows. We'll see you next time on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett for all of us at BMB Productions.